Hello everyone, welcome to the part two of the tutorial session. And in this session, I will um, demonstrate how to use perturbable starting from quantum espresso. I will use four examples. All of these examples can be downloaded from the perturbable website where you can download the tutorial uh, files. And if you uncompress them, you will get these things. First, I will use example one, it, which is using silicon and running QE to Perturbo. If you go into this folder, you will find two folders. The first one is the preliminary uh, things prior to QE to Perturbo, which includes the quantum espresso and the vanilla endurance. And the second one, this is for running QE to Perturbo. Let's first go into this folder. Here you will find six different folders. Um, each of them are needed for uh, not all of them are needed, but most of them are needed for q 2 for Turbo. This one is for computing band structure. This one is for NSTF run. This one is phone on run. This one includes the, the pseudo potentials. This one is the SDF run. And the last, this one is for the 1 in 90 runs. Let's first see the SDF folder. If you go into this folder, you will find the SDF input files. If you look at the in, uh, contents of the SDF input file, you will find this. And this is the quantum espresso input file. So if you are familiar with quantum espresso, you will also be familiar with the flags here. Uh, I will just point out some important uh, variables here. First one is this lattice parameter. Uh, you should make sure that your lattice is uh, in equilibrium or else you will be running subsequent electron phonon calculations in a strained material. And okay. Now you can run this with um, quantum espresso's PWSTF, which will get you the output file and also uh, the charge density in this folder here. Next, I will go to the NSCF folder. Similarly, there are NSCF input files. Let's look at the contents of that one. This is the contents of the NSCF input file. Uh, things to see here is the K points. Uh, the list here are generated using the kmesh.pl script in Vanya 9D. And these generate a uniform grid of course grid points. Now, if you run this using PWSCF, you will get an output file. And also this folder, which contains the wave functions on all of those coarse grids that's given in the input file. Next, the phonon folder. This is the contents of the phonon folder. This is the phonon input file. Let's look at the phone on input file first. This is the contents of the phone input file. Uh, there are many flags, but to point out the important ones, the first one is the epsilon. This one uh, computes, if this one is set to true, then the code will compute the uh, dielectric constant. You must set this to true if you are computing polar materials. However, it does not have to be turned on if you are not computing polar material. And uh, the output directory is uh, set to the temp. And also for the dynamical matrix, you have to set the uh, last one to be .xml because Perturbo only supports .xml formats. And also, this is the uh, density of the coarse grid Q point. Here it is 8 by 8 by 8. Now, in the NSCF run, we have set it to 8 by 8 by 8. And for uh, Perturbo, this Q point grid and the K point grid in the NSCF run has to be commensurate. And K needs to be uh, greater than the Q point. And Q point can be equal or less than the K point's use. 
So for example, if we have used eight by eight by eight K grid, so we can use eight by eight by eight cube grid or four by four by four, two by two by two, or even one by one by one. However, we cannot use six by six by six because it is not commensurate with eight by eight by eight K grid. Now these are the submit and collecting scripts. Uh, so these implement the grid parallelization in Quantum Espresso. Uh, you can submit using this uh, script by editing contents of this script uh, to match the ones that is used in your cluster. And last, after you submit this, uh, you can run phonon collect uh, script then what it will do is it will uh, collect all the files and then save it to this directory. If you go into the contents of the save directory, then you will find a lot of files. Uh, there are, they can be classified. These, uh, .dvscf, this is the uh, phone on perturbation potentials uh, computed using Quantum Espresso and dyn these are the dynamical matrices and inside this uh, si.ph save there are uh, phonon patterns that's saved in this directory next is the vanier function generation now i'll go into this folder here first let's look at the input file This is the input file of the Vanya 90 program. And I would like to point out two parts that is important. The first one is that the right U matrices must be set to true because this will output the U matrices that are to be read by Perturbo. And then you should set XYZ to be true, write XYZ to be true because Perturbo will also read the coordinates of the Vanya functions. Okay, now to run this, we first copy the ones computed in NSCF using this command. I will just type control C uh, to show this. And then we first run a uh, pre-processing pre using funny 90.x pre-processing uh, giving SI. And then we use PW to one in ninety run. Using this command. Also, you can uh, use parallelization in these steps if you want. And then we will run one in ninety again using this command. And then what we will get is the output file and the XYZ coordinates of the Vanier function centers and the U matrices here. Okay, so that is about it for the preliminary run. Next is if you go one step up and go to the QE to perturbo folder, now I will show you how to run QE to Perturbo. First, we copy the contents of the NSCF folder to this folder. Using this command. Then we link or copy the results of the 190 run here. You can do that using this command. Then we run QE to Perturbo. Now let's look at the input file. This is the input file of QE to Perturbo. The prefix, this should be set to the same as that was run before. Output directory, this is where the uh, wave functions are stored at. 
phone on directory. This is the directory where the save folder is at. NK1, NK2, NK3 are the density of the course K grid. DFT band min and DFT band max, these are the uh, minimum and maximum numbers that's used in the Vanier 90 for the band index. Number of Vanier functions is the number of Vanier functions. L Vanier, uh, this is a flag that's, that's true if you are computing first the Vanier functions in the uh, wave function in the Vanier gauge. Uh, and then compute the electron photon matrix elements, which will make the computation more fast. If this one is set to true, then we first compute the electron photon matrix elements, the block gauge, and then transform it to the Vanier gauge, <clears throat> which might be slower compared to the previous one. However, it is advantageous if you are looking for debugging purposes. This flag is set to true if you are um, starting from a previously computed electron photon matrix elements. And this flag system 2D is set to true if you are doing 2D systems. Now, QE to perturbo supports both OpenMP and MPI process, uh, parallelization. So for example, this will tell the code to use two OMP threads and MPI parallelization can be used by using MPI run. Which can be done using this command. This means that we are using two MPA processes and also the number of pools should be the same as the MPA processes so it's also set to true and we are using two open MP threads which means that we will be using four CPUs. Uh, you can vary the number of the MPI threads used, uh, MPA processes to be used or the OMP threads to be used. Now let's look at the output file. Uh, this is the output file of the QE to Perturbo. Uh, when it is done, it will print out this HDF5 database that's to be later used in Perturbo. Okay, so that is the end of example one. Now in example two, I will show you how to use Perturbo. If you go to this folder, you will find two folders. The QE to Perturbo, this folder, contains the previously computed HDF5 database. Now, if you go to Perturbo, you will see a lot of folders. All of these folders correspond to um, different runs. For example, this one computes the band structure, this one for the interpolation of the electron photon matrix elements. This one computing the imaginary part of the self energy of the electron. This one for the holes. This one computing the mean free pass of the electrons for holes, this one for computing the phone on dispersion, this one for the setup procedure for the electrons and holes. This one is the iterator procedure of the Boltzmann transport equation of the electrons and holes. This one is uh, post-processing for electrons and holes uh, of transport routine. This one is using RTA in the transport routine. For this tutorial, I will just use this part, which is interpolating the electron photon matrix elements. If you go into this folder, uh, let's look at the input file first, which is perturbo.in. This is the input file of perturbo. Prefix should be set to the same as the one used in QE to perturbo. In calculated mode, we are using EPH mat, which is the electron photon matrix elements interpolations. The FK list and the FQ list are the list of the K and Q points to be interpolated. Band min, band max are the minimum and the maximum bands that are going to be uh, summed over in the final electron photon matrix elements results. pH frequency cutoff, this is the cutoff frequency 
So if the phonon frequency is less than this energy, then electron photon matrix elements will automatically be set to zero. To run this, we first link the HDF5 database this folder here. And then we run uh, Perturbo similarly as we ran QE2 Perturbo. Perturbo also supports open MP threads, so uh, you can use multiple threads. And also, uh, sorry about that. You can use MPI uh, parallelization as you such as this uh, example here. Okay, so if you use this command, it will use two MPI processes, each using two open threads, uh, totaling of four CPUs to run the perturbo. If you run this, you will get this si.eph mat list, which is the uh, final interpolated electron photometric elements. This is the contents of the final uh, run. The first column is IK, which is the index of the K point. Second is uh, the K points for plotting purposes. Third one is the index of the Q point. Fourth is the coordinates of the Q for plotting purposes. The fifth column is the mode index. Sixth column is the uh, energy of the phonons. This column is the deformation potential in electron volts per angstrom units. And the final column is the electron phonon matrix elements in MEV units. Okay, so now we have gone through QE to perturbo and perturbo. Next, I'll show you what we needs to be done if we are using system spinner with coupling. Perturbo supports both collinear and non-collinear calculations, and also supports spinner recoupling and fully relativistic pseudo potentials. The workflow is also similar to a non-SOC run, so uh, I will just focus on the differences and. These input files can also be found in the home page of the tutorial files. The contents of this folder contains three folders, uh, where this is the preliminary run, this is the QE2 perturbo, uh, and this is the perturbo. First, let's look at the preliminary runs. <clears throat> and first, let's look at the SCF input file. This is the input file for the SCF. Now we are using a spinner recoupling with fully relativistic pseudo potentials for the changes that you need is to use the fully relative, the relativistic pseudo potentials and turn on this non-collinear and L-spin orbit coupling uh, flags to be true. In this way, uh, quantum espresso will compute the wave functions and charge density, including the spinner recoupling. And also for the NSCF, this is the input file for NSCF. Now the bands are doubled because the spins are not uh, doubly degenerate anymore. However, the other things are all um, kept almost the same as non SOC run. For the phonons, this is the input file for the phonons. However, there is not much difference uh, between the non SOC and the SOC run for the phonons. For the Vanier functions input, this is the input file for the Vanier functions, uh, Vanier 90 for the SOC case. What needs to be changed is this the spinners. This must set to be true. And the number of bands and the number of bonding functions are both doubled. 
Okay, that's the end. Uh, that's the difference for the preliminary runs. And if you go to the queue, to perturbable part. And look at the input files. This is the input file. Uh, generally, perturbable will detect if the uh, if the system has a spin or coupling or not. So you don't need to set anything in the input file. The thing you need to set is just to double the number of bands used for both the DFT band index and the binary function index. Okay, that is the difference for the query to perturbo part. Now, if you go to perturbo part, uh, there are many examples, but I'll, as before, I will just use the electron funnel matrix elements interpolation part. And let's look at the input file here. This is the input file for perturbo. The only thing that needs to be changed here also is an index of the band, the band minimum and the band maximum. Previously, we used two and four, which correspond to three to eight in the SOC case. And that is about the uh, end of the change that needs to be done. Okay, next, I will show you how to interpolate the electron photo matrix elements of polar material using example four of gallium arsenide. Let's first look at the preliminary ones. This is the folder for the preliminary ones. And the thing that needs to be uh, changed is the phonon part here. And of course, the other SCF and SCF and the Vanya functions are all uh, adjusted according to gallium arsenide settings. If you look at the input files for the phonons, you can see that the epsilon here must set to be true uh, because gallium, also, gallium arsenide is a polar semiconductor. Then the phonon will print out the born effective charge and the dynamic and the and the dielectric tensor. That is all for the preliminary runs. And if you go to QB to perturbo and look at the input file. Uh, you can see that there is no specific flag for the polar one. Similarly to the SOC case, uh, Perturbo will read and find out automatically whether it needs to include the polar correction or not. So if you run this, it will generate the HDF5 database here. And then if you go to the Perturbo, also, there's a lot of uh, folders, but we will just use the electron flow matrix elements part. And then this is the electron matrix elements input files. If you look at the input file, uh, similarly, there's no uh, flags for the polar part and the code will just automatically uh, subtract the long range part and include the long range part back in the interpolation. If you look at the output file of the electron polar matrix on its uh, interpolation, you will see a similar format, but now this one includes the Frehlich interaction, which shows a divergence of G as one over Q as Q goes to zero. Okay, thank you for your attention. And uh, next part will be part three of the transport routines by um, Dr. Zell.